plays magic cards and I like fairies as well. Tell me who your favourite character was and why you liked him. Jackie Melvin, because uh, he's a football and loves football. In the book, the characters arrange a football match of their own, but it almost ended in disaster. Jackie Milburn booted the ball, Harry Hotspur didn't have a chance of getting his hands to it, the ball flashed past him and banged straight into Fenwick's window. Oh, I think it's a lovely idea and it's a super story. And we're absolutely delighted that Fenwick is in it. As for Granger the cat, well, it was all a bit much for him, so he settled down for a sip of milk and a catnap. But remember, if you walk past any statues this Christmas Eve at around midnight, look up and just check to see if you can see them moving. Siobhan Casey, North East Tonight, Newcastle. Wonderful. We're joined now by the author book, Chris Golding. So, Chris, tell me, we've got a nice taste there from Siobhan. Tell me a little more about the book, Tinsel Toon. Yeah, it's um, narrated by Granger the Cat, as a lovely film there just showed, um, and he explains how all of the statues in Newcastle come to life and turn Newcastle into a marvellous fairy tale city, which uh, I've always thought that it, that it uh, actually where is. Where the inspiration come? It's a wonderful idea. Well, when, when I was little, I was, I was born in Newcastle, but I was brought up in Chesterley Street, uh, which is quite a small town and doesn't have any statues. So whenever I came through shopping with me mum, uh, through to Newcastle, uh, I was always fascinated by uh, Newcastle having all of these statues all around the place. And I used to look up at them as I was walking around and I would imagine them, because I had a vivid imagination as a child, um, and I would imagine them looking down and perhaps uh, winking at me and all waving, something like that. And um, that's what was the inspiration. Great was. idea. Now, apart from being a good reader, it's also a good learning tool, isn't it? Well, yes. Um, a few years ago, I did a book for the city libraries called Hidden Your Castle, which was to get adults who live in your castle to take a second look at this wonderful city that they live in, because I, you ha I know people who've lived in your castle all their lives, and, and, and they don't really know the place. And I thought that it would be a good idea to try and get children uh, to take a second look at Newcastle as well. And it's also part of the National Year of Reading too, isn't it? In, indeed it is, um, because uh, perhaps children these days spend a bit m too much time playing computer games and not as much time reading books like kids used to when I was little. And it, it's beautifully illustrated by it Chris is. Mabbott, uh, beautifully produced by the library. And, and so we hope it's the sort of books, the, the sort of book that uh, children will find really attractive to yeah. read. Are you hoping it will take over from A Christmas Carol as the Christmas story? I don't think I'll ever replace Charles Dickens, <laughs> but all of the children that I've read it to... Um, I, I tried it out on the children of some friends, yeah. uh, Becky and Sarah, and they loved it. And the children uh, from the school today really loved it as Great. well. Great. Chris, I think it's splendid. Thanks very much for coming in. Thanks, Mike. All the best, you. Well, now we've uh, reached the weather forecast. Bob's away doing other things today. That's